How's it going guys? Welcome back. I just picked up this ski do Mach 1. I believe it's a 1992. Paid 200 bucks for it. They were asking three, so talked them down a little bit. But it's uh, you know, been sitting for probably 10 years, he thinks. The hood's not really attached, but it looks like it's all complete. It's got the key. It doesn't have the original gas cap, so the guy threw a bag over it. It's got the tether and 1700 miles not bad if that's accurate so let's bring it back to the shop and see if we can breathe some life back into it And here she is, in a nice warm environment for the first time in a while. Previous owner said it's been sitting about 10 years and that it ran when parked, but you know how that goes. We'll see about that for ourselves. Looks like the hood is just hanging on by a thread. Looks like the plastics probably broke off the hood mount, so we'll have to address that. Looks like the headlight just flopping around in there. This is the 92 model. They had the 617cc motor, which produced about 110 horsepower. It's a twin cylinder, liquid cooled, twin 40 millimeter carburetors. They made a short track and a long track. This is the long track. They called it the uh, XTC. stands for Extra Traction and Comfort. You got your spot for your passenger here. Your grab bar is built into your rear rack. Looks like we've got a tow package. Seat cover has seen its better days, but for our test driving purposes, I think we'll be alright. Looks like we've got our pull cord here, our choke. Looks like our carburetors. That feels free. That's good. Kill switch. It's like our brakes are seized up. That doesn't feel like it's working. They put a bag over this. This isn't the original gas cap and it's missing the top piece here. So hopefully we don't have water in there. But yeah, without further ado, let's pop this hood off and see what we can find out. Here it is, the heart of the machine. A little history lesson real quick. The Mach 1 was originally introduced in 89 and 90 with the 583 motor, and then in 91 and 92 they put the 617 motor, and then in 93 and 94 they put the 670 motor. But there's a rare unicorn that is very valuable. If you find a 91 or 92 that has the 670, that's called a Mach 1X. And they were produced for a very short time. There was only about three of, 300 of them that left the production line. They had bad crank bearings, I believe, and the harmonics from the motor just blew the motors after just a couple hundred miles. So they stopped production on those very quick. And then in 93 and 94, got the bugs worked out, and then the 670 was a good motor. So find a 91 or 92 Mach 1X with the 670. It's worth a lot of money but the motor is garbage. Looks like we've got an extra belt down there. Extra belt over here. Everything looks like it's intact. Looks like it's our fuel shut off. Open, closed. So it looks like our fuel is closed. So that might be a good sign. Looks like we've got two primers here. Why is that? Yeah, that primer, this one isn't even hooked up to anything, so. I'm not sure why they did that, but let's check our coolant level. Yeah, we're up to level on our coolant. Looks like our oil is pretty high as well, so that's good. Looks like our air box is barely holding on. Let's move to the other side. 
So looks like we don't have a belt on our clutches. No big deal, we've got two of them. So first things first, let's go ahead and take this air box off and see if there's any mouse nests or anything in there. weird it's riveted right here and then this top part it's stapled so I can't really pull this thing apart check for nests but just looking in there you guys can't really see but I don't see anything right now we've got good access to our carburetors and our looks like we've got two fuel pumps down there let's take a look and see if our slides go up and down Yeah, slides going up and down. You guys can see in there better than I can. How's it look? All right, about to shop back, but I noticed that we've got ourselves a battery. So that means they opted in for electric start on this model, so we won't have to do much pulling. We'll get all this cleaned out, put a battery on it, and then when it's time to fire it up, we'll just hit a button. Next step here, we're going to check and see if the motor's locked up. I don't think it is, just so everything's looking so far. I think the guy was right. It was running last time it was parked, but it's just been a while, so we're going to go ahead and take the plugs out and put some two-stroke oil right in the cylinder, so when we try pulling it over, it'll just lube everything up. Oh. Man, that is on there. Let's, uh, let's spray this down with some penetrating oil and then we'll let it sit and come back. My buddy recommended this stuff, free all. So first time using it, we'll see how it does. Easy peasy. Oh yeah. So, looks like it was running a little bit on the rich side. They're a little black, but it's all right. Let's give it a little pull, make sure we're not seized up. I don't think we are, but you never know. Oh yeah, easy peasy. All right, let's go ahead and get this battery out of here. We can try checking for spark and then probably do a compression test. And just because, why not? Let's go ahead and test this thing, see if there's any charge left on it. 5.55 volts. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's put this trickle charger on it. Who knows? It might come back to life. Yeah, let's just hook up a jump pack for now. So we'll test spark and compression and the operation of our starter. All right, moment of truth. I'm going to give the key a bump and see what happens. All right, well, starter works. Looks like this cylinder might have a little water in it. That's not the greatest, but yeah, let's uh, check spark while we're here. We'll just set these on top and see if this thing sparks at all. Yeah, I think we're good. Besides the water coming out. 
All right, let's go ahead and check compression. Might indicate something in this cylinder. It's not how it should be. Another thing that possibly could happen, since there's only fluid coming out of this cylinder, there can be a break in the head gasket allowing coolant to flow in there. So we could have a coolant leak as well. Let's uh, see what happens here. Right at a hundred, not the, not the best. Anything over a hundred is okay. Anything below, pretty much time for a rebuild. Yeah, one thirty. So, yeah, that tells us something more on the catastrophic side happened in this cylinder. So, yeah, we might have to rebuild this thing. Especially fluid sitting in there. All the bearings are probably completely rusted. I'm gonna see if I can take the seat off really quick. Give us better access to take a look at the tank. sample looks like old gas smells like old gas we'll see if it separates see if there's any water but there's not really much gas in there anyway so I think we'll just fill it up we can uh, get those fuel pumps to operate all right you see the fuel lines one two I just want to make sure my fuel level is above both of those to make sure those hoses are fully submerged I put quite a bit of gas but just to be sure I put a block of wood just to Lean this tank forward a little bit. Turn the valves on right here. And now I'm gonna get a jar. I'm gonna disconnect both of these fuel hoses. Put it in the jar and see if we fill up. working good all right so we've got our fuel hoses plugged off here so we're not spitting gas everywhere what I think we'll do now is we'll turn this thing on its side and kind of a little more on the upside down side and crank this thing over a bunch and see how much liquid we can get out of the crankcase got this apparatus here got a strap connected there to the end and uh, come along to a chain on the ceiling so Let's uh, crank it up and see what happens. Get out of her. Let's uh, turn it back over, hook some fuel to it, and see what happens. All right, we got these spark plugs in, got our fuel hoses back connected, the carburetors are tight. Or jumper pack. What do you guys think? Think it'll fire up? I give it 60-40. 60% chance it will not, 40% chance it will. So let's uh, get the setup right here. 
Let's see what happens. And give it a few pumps of the primer here. If that even works. Yeah, primer's working. Let's uh, see what happens. thing wants to go well what do you guys think should we try and ride it or take this motor apart and uh, see what the inside looks like all that water kind of makes me nervous you know the crank bearings are probably rusted but let me know in the comments below see what uh, next video should be it's running looks like the uh, clutch here was moving in and out but looks like the idle was set too high looks like it went in and it did come out but uh probably needs cleaned up take some scotch bright to that but uh yeah start it right up let's let's see if it'll go again Yeah, she's a smoker. So it looks like we don't have much of an idle adjustment. So yeah, we'll probably have to end up taking the carbs off and figuring out how to adjust the idle. But yeah, what do you guys think? All right, so the shop is aired out now and I was just kind of looking around. Looks like I lost the idle adjustment out of this carburetor. See how that one has it right there? This one did not. It fell down underneath the motor, so I got it. We're gonna put it back in and see if we can get that idle dialed in. All right, let's try firing it up one more time and we'll see if we can get the idle somewhere close. The idle adjustment isn't doing anything so my guess is that the carburetor slides aren't going all the way down so the adjustment might need to be made here or at the throttle cable but anyways we'll uh we'll dig into that get it to idle eventually but for now let's pull the plugs and let's give it another compression test and see if the other one came back at all all right let's try this again Wow, that one came up actually. Looks like it did equal out. We've got 125 in this piston when it was 100 earlier. Let's check this other one. All right, 125 in that one as well. Right on. All right, got this thing fired up. Pretty awesome. Uh, I think we'll call it for part one. Let me know what you guys think we should do next week. Should we pull the motor out? tear it all apart and look into possibly rebuilding it 
or should we clean up the clutches, put a belt on it, get it to idle, check out the track and the rollers, and just go ahead and send it. Let me know what you think, and we'll catch you next time.